Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about mass moments of inertia via integration. Uh, so what is the mass moment of inertia? Uh, the mass moment of inertia, uh, they're used in engineering mechanics courses to determine a body's resistance to angular accelerations. Uh, so the moment integral about a specific axis represents the shape's resistance to angular accelerations about that axis uh, through the equation m equals i alpha. Uh, this is a, essentially the a rotational version of F equals MA. Uh, instead of F, we've got the moment. Instead of M, we have the mass uh, moment of inertia. And instead of acceleration, we have the angular acceleration here. Um, so if we have somebody, we're rotating it about an axis, we apply a moment M, we would deserve some alpha, and I is the term that's going to relate those two. Uh, so these moments of inertia are second mass moment integrals. All right, so the mass moment of inertia will be dependent upon the location and direction of axis of rotation. Uh, and you can uh, illustrate this with yourself. So if you take a broomstick, kind of rotate it about the center, uh, it's going to take more effort if you're going to rotate that about the end. Uh, and that's because we're going to have more material further away uh, from the center point. Uh, it's going to take very little effort if you rotate it about a different axis. So you rotate the broomstick about kind of the axis of the broomstick. It takes very little effort to rotate it. Um, so you can feel intrinsically the mass moment of inertia uh, by applying a moment and kind of observing the angular accelerations that you would see. All right, so the mass moment of inertia can be derived from the linear version of Newton's second law. Uh, through the kind of following process. Uh, so say we had a point mass M on the end of a massless stick. So we've got some little bit of mass, it's on the end of a stick, stick itself does not weigh anything. Um, and so we've got mass and distance here. All right, so say I took the end of that and I applied some moment to the end of that stick. Uh, and I wanna know what is the relationship between the moment and the angular acceleration uh, of my piece. All right, so if F equals MA, I know I can start there with Newton's second law. Um, I would have some force exerted because of the moment. I would have some acceleration uh, related to the angular acceleration. So uh, the force, well, the moment is a force times distance. So M equals force times distance is one relationship I can put into this. Uh, and then the acceleration of any point on a rotating body is going to be the angular acceleration times the distance. Uh, so that is going to go in there. I simplify this whole thing uh, and I have m is equal to mass times distance squared times alpha. So that distance squared, that's why we're going to use the second moment integral uh, because the distance squared term uh, is what's important, not just the regular distance. All right, so if we had a number of masses, each on the end of a massless stick, um, we'd have the following relationship. So basically, if I kind of sum up all of these mass times distance squared terms, um, that sum would relate my overall moment and my mo overall angular acceleration. And then one step further in all of this, for a solid body rotating about some axis, uh, the mass is gonna be distributed over a volume. So we imagine an infinite number of very small masses. Uh, each held in place by the mass around it. So we get, get, we've gotten rid of that massless stick. Everything's just held in by the stuff around it. Uh, but we still always are gonna have some distance to that central axis we're rotating about. Uh, so in this case, we are taking our equation, our sum one step further. Uh, and so we're taking the integral. We are integrating all the masses and we are integrating that uh, distance squared term uh, over the entire mass. So this is the second uh, moment integral, and it's a mass moment integral here. All right, so finding this, starting from the basic equation we were just talking about, uh, the I is equal to dm times distance squared. Um, in this equation, we'll be moving out from some central axis. Uh, D represents the minimum distance uh, from that axis in 3D. Uh, so this is going to be similar to the polar area moment integral where we radiate out from some central axis, uh, except now we're in 3D. Um, and we generally set up mechanics problems so that the axis is either some fixed axis for rotation, 
Um, and we're going to use the axis generally through the center of mass, or if it's not something like a hinge that is a fixed point. Um, so one of those two things is going to be our axis, so either the center of mass or some fixed axis like a hinge. All right, so next, if the body has a uniform density, uh, aka if it's made of a single material, uh, then we're going to rewrite the mass as density of the body times the volume of the body uh, and move the density, which is a constant, outside the integral. So that would go to this. So rather than integrating mass, we're now integrating volume. Uh, and integrating volume is going to be a little bit easier. All right, so it's additionally important to realize that the distances in our equations are going to depend on the, upon the axis of rotation. So uh, this is going to be important, just like we had earlier with our uh, demonstration with a broomstick. Um, choosing your axis is going to be important. Uh, and we need to keep track of the axis we're using for calculations and match this to the axis of rotation we are examining. So we would have the moment of inertia about the x-axis, which we'd call ixx. And these are going to be distances from the x-axis. So we're radiating out from the, the x-axis. I could do the same thing for the y-axis, but these distances are going to be different. That distance equation is going to be different. Um, and the same thing for the z-axis. So I'm radiating out from whatever axis I am taking the moment of inertia about. All right. so. What does this all mean? All right, so say I'm taking, for this cone, I'm taking IZZ uh, about the, uh, so it's the moment of inertia about the Z axis. So that mass moment of inertia is going to be the density of the material. Uh, and then I'm going to go from R min to R max. So the R min in this case would be zero because I have material right on the central axis to whatever the outermost radius is, uh, and then dv. So dv is the complicated part of this whole thing. So as I rotate out, uh, it's always going to be kind of like a cylindrical area as we radiate out from a central axis. Uh, and two things are going to happen to that in my cone calculation here. So first, the, uh, the dv would be the rate of change of volume, which is the surface as I radiate outward. Uh, times the rate at which I'm moving out. So the area of that outside surface is the area of a cylinder here. Uh, and the radius gets bigger as I move out, but also the height is going to go down because there's less height uh, inside of my cone here. So you need to come up with the mathematical equation uh, for that kind of usually cylindrical area uh, as I am moving out from the central axis that's contained within your shape. Um, so that whatever the equation is for that cylindrical area, uh, we're going to multiply that by r squared. And then that is what we are going to take the integral of and then multiply by density to get the final mass moment of inertia if we're doing this via integration. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.